said unto them, Take heed, and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thy knees, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself, and is not rich toward God. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothe the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. And your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So that ye have and give alms, provide yourselves bags which wax not old, and treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins be girded about, and your lights burning, and ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. May God add his blessing to that further reading of his word and grant us all understanding. <coughs> Control your words. James chapter 3 verse 2. Good. We all make many mistakes. A person who never said anything wrong would be perfect. Someone like that 
would be able to control their whole body too. Unquote. I have been preaching from James. <laughs> it is a letter. James wrote it and sent it to Christian people. Who was James? He was Jesus' half-brother. <coughs> and the pastor of the church in Jerusalem. In chapter 2, James taught one subject, words. Chapter 2, verse 2, quote, We all make many mistakes, unquote. This is very true. We make mistakes in every area of our <coughs> lives. Number one, mistakes against God. Number two, mistakes against Jesus. Number three, mistakes that damage the gospel. Number four, I break God's rules. Number five, I know I should do good things, but I don't. Number six, I make Christian people upset. More mistakes, where are they from? James tells me, verse 2, quote, a person who never said anything wrong would be perfect. Someone like that would be able to control their whole body too. Unquote. Most mistakes come from where? From my words, what I say. In chapter 2, James wrote about the tongue. He said, quote, The tongue is dangerous. The tongue can create many bad words and a lot of trouble. Unquote. Dead fellowship only Maybe, I think, I don't use my tongue to speak. I use my hands and sign. Means James' words are not for me. That is wrong. Doesn't matter how I speak, English or sign language, I must be careful what I say. Maybe I use my tongue to speak. Maybe I use my hands. I must be careful what I say, both ways. When James says tongue, it means the words I say. This morning, I will not say tongue because some deaf people do not use their tongue and speak. I will say words, because words can come from my tongue or from my hands, speech or sign. <coughs> My words affect people around me. How? Two ways. Number one, positive. Means my words help and encourage people. I have good words. Number two, negative. 
means my word do not help people. I have bad words. I must remember my word can help people or damage people. I must be careful what I say to people around me. Also, my words can help me or damage me. My words show what is in my heart. My words can also affect my heart. James teaches, <coughs> if I can control my words, means I will control my whole life. This is called sanctification. Means I improve my life and throw out sin. Some people like quick sanctification. Means what? Number one, some people say, I want to become holy, so I imagine Jesus on the cross. Then my sin stops and I become holy. Maybe that is good sometimes, but that way will not help my sanctification. Number two, some people say, I want to become more holy, so I try to become happy. When I feel happy, my sin stops. That is a wrong way. Number three, some people say, I want to become more holy, so I ask God. It is all His work. I do nothing. That is the wrong way. What is the right way to become more holy? James tells me, control what I say. This is not the only way to become holy, but this way will help me. This way is from the Bible. I try to say good words, and I try to stop bad words. Means I will become more holy, and my life will improve. James gave some examples to explain how to control my words. Verse 3, quote, We put fish into the mouth of horses, to make them obey us. With these bits, we can control their whole body. In James' time, people use horses for what? Number one, work on the farm. Number two, travel. And number three, war. Imagine a horse. It is a big animal. It is strong. But people can control horses. How? With a bit. What is a bit? It is a small piece of metal. There you go, sorry. In the, <laughs> in the horse's mouth.
and hold a bit using two thin pieces of leather called reins. I pull the reins to make the horse turn left and right. The horse is big, but I can control it with a small bit. Same for my words. My tongue is small. <coughs> My hands are small, but they can control my whole life. Example, I am angry or upset. I can control myself. How? I say nothing. Maybe I want to say something, but if I say something, I will become more angry. If I say nothing, my anger will finish. Verse 4. Quote, it is the same with ships. A ship is very big, and it is pushed by strong winds. But a very small rudder controls that big ship, and the one who controls the rudder decides where the ship will go. It goes where he wants it to go." Unquote. <coughs> this example is similar to the horse. A ship is very big, but a small rudder at the back can make it change direction. The rudder can make the ship go left or right. My words are similar. My words can control my life. My words can decide which way I go in life. I must be careful with my words. Verse 5, quote, It is the same with our tongue. It is a small part of the body, but it can boast about doing great things. A big forest fire can be started with only a little flame. Unquote. The tongue or my hands are very small, but they can influence my whole life. James gave an example a big fire in a forest. How did the fire start? A small flame. The flame spreads and becomes a very big fire. No one can stop the fire. My words are the same. Maybe I say a few negative words. I think my words are small, but then the words spread and affect many people. The words can affect my whole life. <coughs> Some wars start how? A few angry words. Big trouble can start from a few small words. I must be careful. What trouble can come from my words? Number one, boasting. 
means I say what I will do, and I am proud. Maybe I am young. I have big dreams. I think my life will be successful. What happens? I say, I will become rich and famous. Then I must try to become rich and famous. I wait my whole life, trying to match what I say. Number two, gossip. We all know gossip is very dangerous. The devil loves to encourage Christian people to gossip. The devil knows gossip will damage Christian people. Maybe I have children and they see me gossip about my friends. My children see I am sinful. Do you think my children will seek Jesus Christ? No. My children will think Christian people are the same as other people. Christians are not special. My words can harm myself and harm people around me. But my word can also help people. I must use my words to help people, not hurt people. Verse 6. The tongue is like a fire. It is a world of evil among the parts of our body. It spreads its evil through our whole body and start a fire that influences all of life. It gets this fire from hell. Good. This verse teaches me how dangerous my words are. My words are like a fire. My words can affect my whole life. Negative words, where are they from? The devil. Maybe I am angry and I insult a friend. Is that good? No. Those words are from the devil. The devil is always near me. He is always encouraging me to say bad words. I must resist him and control what I say. Verses 7 to 8. Good. Humans have control over every kind of wild animal. Bird, reptile, and fish. And they have controlled all these things. But no one can control the tongue. It is wild and evil, full of deadly poison. No person can control their own words. If I have no help, I can't control my words. Who can help me? No one on earth only God can help me. I need full change in my life. I must become a Christian. People who are not Christians can't control their words. When I become a Christian, God will help me and bless me. This is important. I must not try to control my words myself. I will fail. I must pray and ask God to help me. 
Maybe I am always angry and upset. How can I change? Will a doctor help me? Will people's advice help me? No. I must pray. I must continue to pray and never give up. When I pray, God will help me. Then I can control my words. Verse 9. <coughs> Quote, we use our tongues to praise our Lord and Father. But then we curse people who were created in God's likeness. Unquote. I should never curse people. Why? Because God made people in his image. Means we are like God in many ways. Yes, some people are full of sin and evil, but I should never curse them. I remember I am God's child and I have a job. I must tell people about Jesus Christ. I should never curse or criticize. Verse 10, quote, These praises and curses come from the same mouth. My brothers and sisters, this should not happen. Unquote. James was very gentle. He knew the Christian people had sensitive consciousness. He knew the Christian people would listen and accept his words. True Christian people are They accept warnings. Verse 11. Quote, Do good water and bad water flow from the same spring? Of course not. <coughs> and quote. I want to ask you <coughs> good and bad words come from you. Christian people should have good words only. We should help people only, not hurt them. I should make sure I have only good words. I do not want people to be confused with me. Maybe some people think, I do not know if that person is good or bad. He has good words and bad words. That is wrong. I should have good words, clear words, like a sweet water fountain. Remember, your words will affect your character. Whatever words I have, I will become like those words. Number one, bitter words, bitter person. Number two, rude words, rude person. Number three, light words, joking words, light person, not serious. Number four, lying words, false person, no true. Number five, proud words and boasting, proud person. And number six, complaining words, negative person. I must be careful with my words. Whatever words I <coughs> always use, they will affect my life and change me. If I use negative words always, I will become a negative person. 
It is the same in the church. Many sinful things are happening. And we must warn people and challenge them. But maybe we only warn, warn, warn. What will happen? The church will become a negative place. No good words. No happy words. We must warn people, yes, but we must also preach the gospel. Praise God. Tell people about Jesus. We must make sure we have positive words. Example, when I drive my car, I concentrate. I am careful. I watch where I am going. Same with my words. I must be careful what I say. I must watch my words. Remember, my words can hurt people. My words can hurt me as well. I must be careful what I say. May the Lord help us all. Be careful with our words. Amen. Amen.